Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. And originally I was going to do like a more fantastic, wow, documentary of how I made a Winnie the Pooh comic. But uh, let me show you real quick. Uh, this is going to be a lazy video. Uh, yeah, so I'm kind of using the touchpad. And yeah, you can look at that and uh, ooh, uh, it ain't looking too good. It ain't looking too good. Uh, wh what happened? What happened? Yeah, no, this this ain't Matt McMuscle's channel. Uh, and also, this wouldn't be big enough for it to be considered what happened. But yeah, so let me take you back to what was going on in my head. So, and also, I originally planned on having like this. Should, whoops. I could probably edit out a post, but. Maybe I won't even edit. Who knows? <laughs> but no, uh, yeah, so I was going to do like this little funny sketch intro of just like, aha, take something trendy in public domain, make a comment of it, and then wait for the Kotaku article to make you famous. And then see the page, what happened, you know? But yeah, uh, let me take you back. So. Back when the Winnie the Pooh horror movie got officially announced, and first of all, I think the movie looks like crap, but I am 100% supporting it. I am in support of it of its existence, 100% because I am pro public domain. But it got me to think, okay, what could I do with Winnie the Pooh? And I came up with this idea of hey, why don't we try to make him into a tokusatsu hero? That'd be cool. You know, and, of course, comic page, you kind of know what, how, how that turned out. Well, anyway, I want to eventually start making comics on my own. And But, unfortunately, I don't have much experience making comics, so I was watching a few videos on YouTube, how to make comics, and... One of the YouTubers I watch, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but he suggested, you know, you gotta go make a one shot, you know, 15 page. And so last month in August, I decided, you know, for that month to challenge myself during, because I work like on a part time job on the weekends, I couldn't do it on the weekends, but essentially for the other five weeks, I would spend, you know, about roughly two hours a day, you know, working on this one shot. So I wanted to challenge myself on making a 15 page one shot in a month. And it brought me back to the Winnie the Pooh idea. It's like, hey, I, I could do something with that. And that's how we got here. But before we go back to the comic, well, first of all, if you want to read the comic, I'm sure I'll post the Twitter thread link that has all the pages posted. So you can check it out there. Uh, but other than that, let me get to the right one real quick. Yeah, so this probably won't be edited super crazy. So I want to say... With the comic, it actually started off pretty well. I thought I was t managing my time pretty well, but perhaps maybe not. Uh, so we're going to go here. I don't know why OBS is not fading from this screen to the other. I, I don't know. Uh, it, it's supposed to. It's weird. Anyways, uh, here we got the log line. And also... <laughs> I don't have my mouse connected, so I'm using the touchpad on my laptop because there's just I don't have enough USB ports. I need to get like a port, a port hub, not not the not the one with the N, no P O R T, not 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 no N, no YouTube. Don't don't age restrict. Don't do it. We didn't even say it. We don't. We didn't even properly spell it. All right. Moving on. Uh, so yeah, before I went to script, I created this little outline for myself. It's just a couple bullet points. There's no kind of format of that. I first started off with a log line, which is Christopher Robin and Winnie the Pooh must realize what true friendship is in order to protect each other. That was sort of the log line. 
And then I went down with the uh, protagonist, uh, Christopher Robin, give him a little description. Then I wrote down what he, where he was at the start and where he would be in, by the end of the one shot, the 15 page one shot. So here, description, Christopher Robin, he's a college student who wants to become a successful adult. You know, and at the start, he's too focused on his future and becoming successful that he neglects his friends. And by the end, he realizes that he can't neglect his friends for his own sake and that they are what will help him become truly successful in life. You know, so we're already getting a, probably a bit too deep into the like too many characterization. It's like, hmm, how are you going to fit that into one? You know, 15 pages, but I'll go into the, the process of making the comic more. But then we get into Weedy Pooh description. Small Bear and Christopher's childhood friend. At the start, Pooh is too dependent on Christopher Robin and clings on to their childhood friendship. And by the end, Pooh realizes that he can't depend on Christopher for everything. He must be there for Christopher as well, and that friends do change and grow up. You know, so I I do think I am I am proud of myself for creating this sort of conflict of Winnie and Christopher are on sort of like two extremes on this friendship. You know, we got one that is being way too neglectful, and the other who's being way too clingy. You know, so these like very extreme toxic behaviors. Well, not super extreme, but you know, in terms of this like linear scale, it is sort of you know on the extreme ends, you know, they are, they are both, you know, toxic in the nature, but they're different. And by the end, they must kind of like, uh, what, what's the word? It starts with, the, I, oh my God, I hate now I have to, uh, I hate that I legit like block out the words, uh, in my mind. It, it's like right there. Um, not collaborate, but uh, compromise. There we go. Compromise. Finally, remember the word. Eh, so yeah, that, those are the protagonists. And then there's only one other character, which is... Originally, I wrote the Woozles. I went off and making just one Woozle. And yes, Woozles are in the public domain. And they are beasts that put us for and poo in danger. So they are just like kind of the obstacle. Really, the antagonist is between Christopher and Winnie. You know, they're the antagonist to each other's stories, to be honest. Uh, and the Woozle just mainly is the uh, shoot the like inciting incident or the major obstacle that they have to overhurdle to you know resolve. So yeah, conflict and resolution. Both Winnie and Pooh have a different extremes of friendship. Yeah, I just kind of explained that. And they both need to realize what true friendship it requires an effort on both of their ends. You know, I probably mumbled through all of that. Apologies. Then I just wrote in the 100 acre words for the world, and then I went to the story. So, story, when he brings Christopher into the woods, they have an argument about their friendship, Woozle attacks, Christopher gets cornered, and Pooh realizes he has to fight to protect Christopher. Then the Woozle, I said the Woozles. Again, this was written before I decided to just go to one. And, you know, so anyway, uh, the Woozle kind of like gets on Pooh, and Christopher realizes he can't abandon his friend. Christopher and Pooh, with the power of friendship, fuse to become a superhero. They defeat the Woozle and apologize to each other about their previous actions. So, all well and good. So, after that, I think I spend the next week writing the script. It took me a little bit longer to get this through, but I managed to get it done within the week. So, this was like uh, either first week or week two. So, yeah, this is the format I went. There was. I couldn't really find uh, a clear format for how to write a comic, except I remembered after writing this, oh yeah, Godzilla Rulers of Earth, uh, the volume one of the graphic novel shows you 
the script and how it's laid out. So next time I'm going to do that because while this looks very organized, it's, uh, you know, it was kind of a pain in the ass to write, <laughs> you know, just to kind of like make sure everything's in the right spot and all that. So it, it wasn't really helpful. And also, uh, part of it too with this format is I, uh, back in college, I took a screenwriting class and got a, it was like the only class ever in like college and school that I've ever got a hundred on. <laughs> but anyway, you know, I don't know what happened here. That's weird. That's just his team. Maybe I've accidentally pressed cut or whatever anyway yeah uh, it went through a couple edits even while i was you know drawing the pages the script went through a couple edits so all fine and dandy there and this leaves us to here but i didn't go straight to the drawing uh let me see if i can pull it up real quick before we did that no, that's the rough. Uh, I drew a little storyboard. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, you're seeing all this awkwardness unfold behind, you know, over you. And yeah, I don't think I am going to um, really edit this because I got other bigger videos I want to work on and I don't want to spend a lot of time editing this. So here we go. This is the storyboard. It's very rough. You know, I think I spent too much time on this one, but I got faster as the pages went on. So uh, that's pretty much the gist of it. And funny thing is I initially did record all like the beginning part of the storyboards, but didn't record you know, the speed, you know, like the rest of the story storyboards, but I did record all the pages. And I realized recording them is going to waste because I decided, hey, I don't want to edit, you know, this. But yeah, anyway, uh, I think it took me about a week as well to finish all the storyboards. Uh, probably spent a bit, you know, I just did the, all the storyboards before I, you know, went back and write all the pages, so. I think that was a mistake as well. It's just kind of like, I think, you know, it was smart of me getting the script done first. And what I should like, what I should have done is I should have done storyboard and then, you know, just finish a page, one go. So storyboard, fin you know, line, ink, letter, next page. Storyboard, you know, that's what I should have done. But instead I went storyboard, all 15 pages, and then then you know go page by page with the inking and i think that was not i think it was counterintuitive and so where so after that we are left with uh gal unlock them also initially i was playing with clip studios comic tools but um what happened I decided they were not fast enough. <laughs> so I decided to just start drawing the panels on my own because I thought that was just a bit quicker. And it I took about an hour to get this one page done and I all and this was like the page where I realized, oh no. Uh because here's the thing. I actually took a week off. I procrastinated, so for the inking and lettering let me get into full screen to emphasize just what I mean. So for the inking and drawing of all 15 pages. Well, first of all, I didn't even have five days. I had four because a part-time job is pulling carts. And I sort of like, yeah, I procrastinated the second to last week of August. Didn't get any pages done. So it had to all be done the last week of August and the first two days of September, but shh, don't matter. Don't matter. But yeah, what happened is I procrastinated. I want to get, I think, the Mothra illustration done for last week's video. I wanted to get that done. And when it came to the weekend, 
Uh, it was a really bad weekend at work. I actually kind of hurt my, you know, hand, my drawing hand, pulling so many carts. So I had to take Monday to rest. So none of the 15 pages are done. I have four days left to finish this challenge that I put on myself. So that means I had to get about four pages done a day with three in the last day instead of the original three pages a day that I initially thought. And even then, I think that was overestimating myself because now we can get back to here. So where 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 did I go wrong? Well, I did create myself some character design you know, sheets, but they weren't super detailed. They were really rough sketches. So I was going off rough sketches and those were the only references I was really using except for like two panels. I think with Pooh, other than like later on in the manga, I start to, or the one shot, whatever, I start to, you know, uh, get into a better style and rhythm with Pooh. But Pooh is a very simple design. Uh, this one part right here, let me get the math. Yeah, this one part right here, uh, I didn't, I don't like that. I was trying something with the perspective here and all that, you know. I, and this is the page I spent the longest to. And But I think the biggest, you know, the biggest flaw or the first big mistake was I wasn't using enough references. I was, And I was not using any anatomy references. So it leaves us with that. So, and I also draw the background right here. And yeah, I think they're pretty out of sight. Here's the thing with me. I'm an illustrator, but I, like, I've mostly done illustrations. I haven't done any comics. One thing that is a problem with me is that I do not measure my characters when I draw because I'm mostly, like, drawing one or two characters at a time. So I feel the need to not to, but when gain this project, I, I'm I'm horrible with measuring, like, my own drawings. So... Yeah, uh, we're going to go to page two. No background here. Try to do some speed lines here. You know, so, yeah, I was, like, realizing, like, you see how it's all messed up here. Like, how the lines are not that great. The shapes are all wobbly and stuff like that. It, it's very rough, especially with Christopher. Hare. I have so much, I had so much trouble drawing Christopher Robin's hair. Uh, and again, I wasn't even focusing on cutting these edges, so it's all everything's all wonky. And I think we got to page three. You know, is everything okay? I'm fine. I actually kind of like this panel, but even though I think it's pretty rough, just because I guess able to get the lighting okay. Um, uh, this panel's not too bad, other than Christopher's face being very slanted and I, I do not well I tried to do the you know the sigh breath thing with poo uh so that's weird uh so for this back part I actually copied that for page four just save time you know so I think that was a thing that was like hey yeah do that to save time it's your own art <laughs> like what I mean I'm sure people are going to complain ahead Dare you copy your own art? You lazy artist. You need to redraw everything from scrap. It's like, no, I'm not doing that for this man. You know, and yeah, so you can see how the panels, again, are just getting... The line spacing is all wonky and all that. And I'm not going to read everything. And yeah, so... I think, you know, you can start saying I'm getting a little bit more sloppy. But I'm all at the same time I was drawing it, I learned that I was getting the pages done faster the more pages I got done. So, like, it spent me about an hour for the first page. I think around the first five pages, I was able to get down to, like, 40 minutes for inking and text and all that. I like this shot right here, even if I think Christopher looks wonky. You know, and 
then we get our woozle. Woozle's gonna be oh he is our woozle's gonna be a culprit of just looking wonky and not like uh out of model all the time. And again, wasn't using enough references for Woozle and I cheated here with only using the head. No. I will say one thing I like is like I kind of like how Whoa, how did this only get grayed out? Uh, oh, it's low opacity. Okay. Well, I gotta fix that. I will say, even though I think the Woozle looks very wonky here, I love how I did the speed lines with Pooh right here. It does look like he's getting hit. I will say I am pleased with myself how I was able to kind of set this up storyboard. So I'm glad I did take my time with the storyboards, but again, I should have probably... Search the process up, you know, and everything's just kind of looking wonky and stuff. I'm not, you know, now I'm starting to get into the part where it's taken me 30 minutes to get them done. Uh, this page isn't too bad because, again, I, I really like how this sets up. It's like kind of a moment just from Pooh scared to Pooh being very angry and all that. I think I like this shot but because I draw faces a lot so this was easier and yeah so you notice how I said you know it's like I now just kind of did the sonic thing and cartoon thing and just instead of having the you know smile all like the mouth being all here it's just off to the side more cartoonish which leads me to this page you know I like the panel with Pooh you know, punching the woozle. And yeah, so I think I'm getting to 35 minutes. That's how much I'm spending time. I, I don't know what I was doing with the line, you know. I was trying to, you know, demonstrate that Christopher is clenching his, you know, he's clutching his fist. But I don't, but it makes it look like he's grabbing the ground. Uh, I think that was a mistake right here. I will say I like this touch I did with kind of the reflection in Christopher's pupil of uh, the shape of Pooh, the Voozle's paw, and all that. And here we go. This panel looks decent enough. The lines are still rough, yes, but I know the difference between this panel for this panel. I used a reference, but if you were an Ultraman fan, you know what my reference was. You know, he, he's, I used a reference of number six, you know. And yeah, it was definitely an homage to Ultraman, and it's not the only one that pops up. And also, I should real quick go back. Uh, so even though my goal was to make Pooh a Tokusatsu hero, so I was in, kind of going into this, I was influenced not only by say, Kamen Rider and Ultraman, I was influenced by Digimon because of the whole kind of partner, you know, dynamic between human protagonist and an animal creature protagonist, you know. So that that was sort of like the influences right there. And by the way, there is actually quite a connection between Digimon and Tokusatsu. That might be a video for not the near future, but somewhere somewhere in the future. But yeah, anyway, back to the comic. You know, this is the part where they fuse. And by the way, this, you know, these two parts, I actually used reference. I was referencing the uh, rise of Ultraman Jack, Ultraman Jack's rise, you know, or also the Studio Kara logo, which is the same, you know, it's the little star that, that, and I think this hand turned out decent enough. But anyway, then we get to my favorite page to work on. Bam. You know, uh, so yeah, this is the first time, you know, Pooh is like um, transformed. I call him Pooh Bear. I think I was very off model with Pooh Bear for a couple bits. Uh, I'm going to work on the illustration that's going to show a better idea of what I was going for, and that'll be on my Twitter and probably be on the thumbnail for this video. But yeah, I will say I do like how dynamic this is. The lines, again, are super rough. 
I do feel like I think I was trying to tap into uh, Shator Shitaro Ishinomoji. That's kind of the vibe I'm getting through this one. Oh, another thing is that the lettering for your, you know, just a wham, the onomatopoeias. I should have just gone with a different font, you know, because again, with this M, it looks like it's a part of Pooh, like Pooh himself, and that's not good. So just because I went with a bigger, thicker line, it's it's not good. You know, it doesn't stand out from the piece too much. And then we get to the action scene. You know, I try to do Pooh, you know, gang up. Pooh just is not matching character whatsoever. Uh, anyway, we're going to get to the end. I like this. But again, it's sort of, I do like the callback of, that I did with, you know, sort of Pooh getting angry and then we get to see the shot of Pooh Bear. I think that was a good callback. Uh, this one looks a little wonky. Everything looks wonky. Um, but yeah, I initially image, like, imaged, like when I was writing this, uh, I thought about having the Woozle breathe fire on the poo. But I was like, no, this is only a 15 page, you know, one shot. And we haven't even seen, you know, the Woozle do that before. We have seen him use his tail to attack. So that was like, you know, kind of like the reference of just to call back. You know, it's like, I didn't want to just add in this new power at the very end that wasn't built up. So instead I wanted to show something that was you know used to hurt Pooh and but when it came to Pooh Bear Pooh Bear was able to catch it and you know, basically counter so yeah uh, and then we get to the shot right here okay you know that is definitely reference to Ultraman right there that is ult classic Ultraman's rise and then we get the explosion and then we get to the final page and this was initially going to be, either way, for these last three pages, I went down to 20 minutes spending per page, and per page, blah. But really, like, uh, this one, like, yeah, I think you could tell, I just wanted to get this done. Like, I full-heartedly just wanted to get this done, because this looks... This looks bad by every means, and it's not even like initially. This was gonna be like sort of the you know callback to the first page right here. And I was gonna do this shot again, but with Christopher smiling. What I probably should have done was copy, but then again, you know, I was just in a mood. I was tired. I wasn't liking how this was turned out, and I just wanted to get it done. So, anyway, that is it for that. So, I'm going to pull up a list of stuff that I learned. Uh, I don't... It's okay. So, what have I learned? Uh, shoot. I want to make sure it's on the right spot. So, yeah. What have I learned? So, first of all, 15 pages is too much for one week. Especially in the style, like, more of the style I want to go to. I'm thinking maybe, at best, like, two pages a week. Maybe, but realistically, one might be doing, you know, it's so like one to two pages. That's better. That's like a better time frame for the, how I work and stuff like that. That might seem a bit more reasonable. Uh, second is that I greatly underestimated the workload and overestimated my own skill. So I think this project helped me humble myself a bit better because I could just like, it made it so that even though I knew comics is, you know, tough, it gave me a better idea of making my own 15 page one shot and me considering this a failure, just kind of realize personally how much you know, the workload is like, you can have so many people tell you, oh, it's hard work, but you won't, you know, believe it until you actually do it yourself. So I am actually proud that I got it done. You know, I did it. So 
and again, the overestimated my own skill. So that comes to, you know, drawing without reference. And I don't think as an artist, I am quite there yet, especially with anatomy. I need to go back and learn some anatomy. Um, and like go back, study anatomy a bit more. And I'm not at a point with my anatomy where I can just draw without reference. And that leads on to the next point. References are my friends and I should actually use them. Yeah. So next time, next time I make a comic, more references and spending more time per page. Uh, then I wrote down, I made several mistakes, yada, yada, yada. Uh, yeah, something I found out and I told you about is I was starting to get faster the more pages I did. Uh, this, you know, challenge made me think that, you know, made me kind of consider it's like, okay, what do I want to do with my own art style? You know, because I, I think I've been, like, I'm someone who likes to draw in many different styles. But at the same time, I really want to start focusing on maybe my, my own unique art style. So when I, like, start selling comics and stuff like that, you know, that people are going to like that style. But I think it's important to have, like, as an artist, I think it's important to be able to draw in many different styles. But it's, I think there is value into having your own style depending on what type of artist you want to be. And as I want to be an independent artist with art, you know, making my own comic, I think it's going to be more beneficial for me to have my own style while I'll still have the ability to draw in different styles. Um, even though I consider this a failure, I am very much glad that I did it. And it did make me realize that even though it turned out like shit, I got it done within the deadline. So it's just that it's more so I need to learn to properly manage my, you know, really know what I can do, have maybe a better flexible deadline. But I think it was important that, you know, it's like, yeah, I was able to get it done by the deadline, though, even though it turned out like shit. So anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Next week, I am going to do a monthly news roundup. I don't know what to call that series yet, but yeah, I'm going to be taking all the kind of news that happens in September and kind of just doing like a whole roundup and month in review of news, you know, sort of like that. Yeah, and it's going to be news regurgi regurgitation, blah, and it's going to be lazy edit video, but I need these lazy edited videos so I can make the better edited videos and spend more time on those. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to follow me on Twitter. That's where I post my arts. And yeah, subscribe if you want to see more stuff. Uh, I probably won't have uh, another video of talking about my, you know, any comic projects anytime soon. I do, I am starting, going to start on one, you know, like a project soon enough within the next couple, like next month or two, I'm probably going to start, you know, my big comic, you know, project that I'm hoping to maybe monetarily make, who knows? Anyway, don't, don't forget about, shh, shh, just ignore that last part, uh, but yeah, I'm not going to be talking about my own projects too often on this channel, don't worry. I am going to be talking mostly about, to, you know, other tokusatsu properties. But yeah, uh, subscribe if you want to watch, you know, more stuff. Uh, next, mo next month, especially, I have some videos cooking up that I think you guys are going to like. And, you know, so stay tuned for that. I'm going to be talking all stuff like that and... Check out the you know other videos I've made. See if you like them. And again, subscribe if you want to see more. Hit the bell notification. Uh, leave me a comment to tell me what I'm doing right or what I'm doing wrong. Like this video if you... I don't know why you would like this video, but I would appreciate it if you like this video. Dislike this video if you think my art <laughs> is absolute trash. And I might agree with you in, in this instance. In this instance. I, I need to have some self-confidence. So my illustrator work, no, I, whatever. 
Dislike the video if you just don't like me. <laughs> How's that? Uh, but yeah, like the video if you want to show your support. And But as always, just have a fantastic day. Take care and shoo-watch!